All right, everybody, we are beginning our next unit on the Assyrians, Chaldeans, and Persians. That's what this ACP stands for. We're starting off today with the Assyrians. So um, the Assyrians, you may have heard me say this before, I like to refer to them as Mesopotamia version 2.0. Um, they are Mesopotamia, but they are a different Mesopotamia in some ways than the Mesopotamia we learned at the start of the school year. Because we are now a thousand years after Hammurabi, when we're talking about Mesopotamia and what's going on now. Um, and for that thousand years, between Hammurabi and um, the Mesopotamia version 2.0 that I'm going to talk about now, they were constantly getting conquered by other people. Um, a group in northern Mesopotamia, known as the Assyrians, rose to power and puts an end to that. Um, and you're going to learn their crazy, insane belief system that focuses entirely around war. So, the Assyrians are warriors, and this is because of their geography. Now, when we last talked about the Mesopotamians, you know there were the two rivers. Shout them out if you know them. Hopefully you just said Tigris and Euphrates River. Some of you probably mispronounced some of it, but if that's what you were thinking of, good job. So um, they do have those rivers, but they don't have cataracts like Egypt did back in the day. And as we know, even the cataracts that Egyptians had, it, it doesn't help anymore with the invention of chariots. So without cataracts, Mesopotamia constantly has someone else in charge of them over these thousand years between Hammurabi and the Assyrians rising to power. And just as a side note, when I say Assyrians now, some of you might think like, oh, like the country Syria. No. Um, so Syria and the Assyrians um, are named from the same kind of area because um, the Assyrian people that we're talking about came from what is today northern Iraq and the border of Syria. And you know what? While I'm saying these things, it would be helpful so on on a map, right? That makes complete sense to me. Oh, I got to type it in again. So, um, so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, the Assyrians are a group of people today that are um, a group in Iraq. Let's get out of our, our neck of the woods. To zoom out a lot. So there we go. All right. So there is a group today in Iraq that are the Assyrians. Um, they are not like these ancient Assyrians. They are the native people of Iraq, and they live um, in northern Iraq today. So it's this part of the world in northern Mesopotamia that the Assyrians came from. It's connected to the country name. Syria, but the Assyrian people that today live in Iraq, they're not like the ancient people, and don't call them Syrians, because they'll be like, I'm not Syrian, I'm Assyrian. And you might be like, that's what I said. Like, no, because <laughs> I know a Syrian and Assyrian sound very similar, but no, 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 no. Um, anyway, back to this. So um, the Assyrians, because they were constantly getting taken over, they learned how to fight back. Um, and it's the kind of thing that, you know, I'm going to give you it in this very weird, very strange example. If every single day you got punched in the face, just wake up, boom, punch in the face. Next day, punch in the face. Next day, punch in the face. Um, and eventually you would learn certain things. Like you would learn to expect it. Therefore, you're learning how to block you're learning how to maybe throw the first punch and things like that. So the Assyrians learned how to fight. So over time, they built a very powerful army. And by the year 1100 BCE, they started conquering their neighbors. They figure, you know what? We're constantly getting conquered. If we control the land, it'll make us stronger and nobody's going to mess with us. So. 300 years of conquering later, they're strong enough to take over the cities and trading routes throughout Mesopotamia. 
they're expanding their empire. Now, eventually, before I get to that, let me show you how big their empire gets. Eventually, yeah, they control this big yellow blob of land. Essentially, everything that we've studied so far. So we got Mesopotamia, we have Phoenicians in Hebrews land, we have Egypt. Now, you might be wondering, why is it only the area around the Nile River? Ha ha! Hopefully you remembered, we got deserts here, we got deserts here. You know, this is the, the valuable fertile land that you want to be in charge of. They also got what is today Cyprus there. All right. So the army is well organized. And when I say well organized, I don't mean like um, somebody's notebook is well organized. I mean, they are organized into specific units. Well, I guess it's kind of like a notebook. Like, if you had a binder that is organized into specific sections, that could be an okay comparison here with the Assyrians. So, the four groups in the Assyrian army. We have the foot soldiers, which, surprise, surprise, soldiers that fight on foot. Then we have charioteers. Guess what they fight on? Chariots, yes. Calvary, those are your type of soldiers that fight on horseback. And then your archers, which obviously deploy bow and arrows. So you have four distinct groups. Now, at first, as the Assyrians are starting out, they only fought in the summer. But as they take more land, being in the army needs to be a full-time job. And as they take over more land, they need more soldiers. So they force conquered people to serve now you might be thinking they can like if the assyrians conquered me i wouldn't serve well then they'd kill you so <laughs> that's kind of how it worked is that it was either join them or die and if you were like i would start the secret resistance um good luck with that it it, it didn't work because the assyrians lasted a pretty long time with this now, the Assyrians had really strong weapons that were made out of iron. And iron weapons are the strongest kind of weapons in ancient times compared to weapons that were made out of copper and tin. Now, here's how they made these strong weapons. There was a group of people called the Hittites that invented something pretty important to ancient warfare. Um, the Hittites lived in what is today Turkey. So let me get my map here. So the Hittites are like up here. Um, they developed a process to make iron into weapons called smelting. Now, by me saying this word, if you have some Minecraft experience and ability, you right now are like, I know what this is. Well, there you go. Did you ever think Minecraft would help you in social studies? Um, if the answer was no, there it is. You know smelting. So, um, smelting is a process where you heat the iron ore, hammer it into a mold, and then rapidly cool it so it stays in that new, sh new shape. And the Assyrians learned how to do this from the Hittites. So that's where different positions like blacksmiths come into play here. They work with iron. Now, the Assyrians are not your know, nice, friendly conquerors. They are horrible, cruel warriors. And for several hundred years, they brutally conquered areas, as I showed you on this map, all over the Middle East. They don't do it in a, okay, I'm your new board, your, I'm your new boss. It is, I am going to destroy everything, and if you resist me, you will die. Yeah, psychopaths. So, um, they were really good at attacking cities. So some of the techniques they used, including tunneled under city walls, climbing over it on ladders, and battering rams to get through the gates. And I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, like, uh, like someone's climbing on a ladder, just push them off. Well, it's not as simple as you might think. I'm going to show you some, some pictures here of different things. So some of this is in Lego form, as you can see. Thank you, random people on the internet. So what you see here... <laughs> Um, this is a battering ram. So as they're attacking a city, the Assyrian army would try and bust through the gates using battering rams. 
Um, another tactic they would use is the ladders. Now, here's what I mean by on ladders. Now, um, that means they're on the ladders as the ladders are getting pushed up to attack the people um, on the front. Now, if you are a Lord of the Rings fan, you might recognize this image. And if you don't recognize this image, you might recognize this image. So um, in the second Lord of the Rings movies, now I'm talking Lord of the Rings, not The Hobbit. Um, in one of the battle sequences, they used Assyrian style invasion tactics to, you know, film that that warfare. So when we say ladder, so you got the battering ram going on there, it's just a constant stream of people. And then if you still don't get what I'm saying, saying, here's it in Lego form. So you can see, oh, you just knock this guy off. Well, there's so many more coming at you. And if you're like, oh, I'll just push the ladder off. Yeah, that's kind of hard to do with so many people on the ladder that once they see you, remember, they're trying to kill you. So uh, we got battering rams. We got ladders. Also, the Assyrians have this kind of thing, a siege tower that is their tactic. And they would tunnel under the city walls too. So they're doing all these things at once. Now, another thing to remember is that you didn't know you were getting attacked by the Assyrians until they started attacking you. There is no radar in ancient times or anything like that. And it is complete annihilation. The Assyrians are not taking over these cities and like keeping them, they are burning them to the ground and then forcing the people into their cities. So once inside the city, as I mentioned, the Assyrians would set fire to the buildings, take the goods, anything of, of value, the Assyrians just stole, and they made the citizens slaves. Now, um, let's say you surrendered. So anyone that resisted is brutally defeated. Like you resist, dead. Doesn't matter if you're old, if you're young, if you're a woman, if you're a kid, you resist, they slaughtered you. These are horrible, psychotic people. Now, if you surrendered without fighting, the Assyrians were so brutal, some cities were afraid and they said, listen, Assyrians, don't kill us. We surrender. We'll be part of your empire. The Assyrians didn't make those people slaves. They had to, um, the people that surrendered their cities had to pay them heavy taxes, but they didn't die. Now, the reason the Assyrians are so psychotic is they thought if they ever stopped conquering, the world would end. So the Assyrians, um, most worship God is a Mesopotamian God called Asher. And they believed that Asher proclaimed that he would end the world if the Assyrians ever stopped conquering. So that's why they're doing this. Crazy. Now, the Assyrians had some strong kings over these years to do this. And the strongest Assyrian king is a guy named Asher Bonapal. So he's got the name of the god Asher in his name, Asher Bonapal. One of the most interesting things about Asher Bonapal is he's this cruel, gruesome Assyrian king, but did something that we feel the impact of even today in 2020 and improved the lives of people everywhere because he created the world's first library. Now, some of you immediately right now might be like, Mr. Guji, Mr. Guji, that's not true. Benjamin Franklin created the first library. Um, in the United States, that is true. Like Ben Franklin created the first library of the United States, but not in the world. Libraries existed for thousands of years thanks to this crazy Assyrian king, Ashurbanipal. His library had 25,000 tablets and he stole them or had his soldiers steal them from the people he conquered. So if they were conquering your city, some of the goods that they're taking are your tablets, are your books, are your stories, all that kind of stuff. And they're put into Asher Bonapal's library. So 
great idea, but we can't really approve of his method of doing so. Is like stealing the the stuff. So not great in terms of execution, but thanks to Asher Bonapal, libraries are a thing. Kind of weird to think it came from a psychotic warrior, but there you go. Now, in order to keep all these people under control, um, they divided the management of the empire into provinces. And what a province is, is a political district. And you had a government official known as a governor, sound familiar, that is in charge of collecting taxes and making sure the king's laws were followed. So let me go back to my Assyrian Empire map. So Ashurbanipal can't be everywhere, so he would have governors in different provinces. So if you were the governor over here in the province of Sumer, what, what was the old Sumerian territory with Ur and stuff like that, you'd be responsible for making sure the laws were, fe- were followed out, the taxes were paid, all that kind of stuff. So that's his system of keeping control. They also, the Assyrians, created a system of roads to connect these provinces. This leads to an increase in trade, and then the soldiers would patrol the roads so that it was safe, that there was no robbers or things like that. And the Assyrian roads also had rest stops. So for a group of psychopaths that are trying to conquer as much as they can because they thought the world would end, they do leave some pretty important contributions um, to society. All right. The capital city of the Assyrians was called Nineveh. I know it looks like nine ve, but it's pronounced Nineveh. That's their capital city. And a familiar tale befalls the Assyrians. So we've heard this story before. When you have a strong leader, if the next person isn't as strong, it's going to be toast for the empire. And that's what happens to the Assyrians. So when Ashurbanipal dies, his son stinks. Um, there are revolts from all these people all over the empire in the provinces that want their freedom back. Empire is too large to stop all of these revolts at the same time and down go the Assyrians. And they're taken over by a group in Babylon called the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans were a province of the Assyrian Empire. And they are also known as the Babylonians because they're they're from Babylon. They take control of, of a good chunk of the old Assyrian Empire, but their empire is way smaller compared to the Assyrians. So like, um, you can see it on this map here. So the green, like the, the light green, and the dark green is like the Assyrians, but the dark green is just what the Chaldeans take over. So essentially they take over um, Mesopotamia proper and then a little bit of what is today Syria and Turkey, but this other parts of the land um, go back to being ruled independently. All right, I got some more stuff to show you about the Assyrians. So we're gonna look at some images from the British Museum Um, in London, um, about the Assyrian Empire. So one of the interesting things about the Assyrians is they were big on these symbols where you have, like, this is supposed to be, um, like a, almost, not a phoenix, but like a, like a griffin with, like, wings and stuff like that. So, like, some sort of mythological creature And they would put this outside their gates for protection. So to get to the Assyrian exhibit, which is right over here, um, they they put these there. um, So it was kind of similar to walking into an Assyrian city. Now, um, the way that Britain acquired these things is not the greatest. Um, After World War I, Britain controlled Iraq. And one of the things they did is they, and there you get a good kind of close-up of the back of this, and you can see the cuneiform writing over here. Um, One of the things that they did in Britain um, is they just took things from Iraq when they were in charge of them um, at the end of World War I, because Iraq then wasn't 
a country. It was like people that were constantly being ruled by other people. So Britain just took a whole bunch of their artifacts and put them in their museums. And that's why they're there today. So here we see some, some different kind of wall designs. So you could see a chariot. Um, these are soldiers going off to war. Another thing we have here is, um, here's some more. This is the other piece of it, soldiers going off to war. So you can see um, interesting kind of things. Now, these are pieces, the whole thing um obviously has been damaged over time over thousands of years um so that's why there's pieces that you could see at the british museum now um there were there was um this type of lion called the mesopotamian lion that is extinct um part, partly because of how much it was hunted and there you can see even the ancient assyrians um that poor lion right so messed up um, but you can see how they would like hunt the lions and things like that. All right, so that is part one of our ACP unit, the crazy psychopaths known as the Assyrians.